welcome to Fulcro. In this video I'm going to just show you how to get started, do some of the very simple basics um, to get you comfortable with the ecosystem. So the first thing you're going to want to do is use uh, the Linegan tool, which you can install from the internet, uh, to create a new project. We're going to create a new Fulcro project and we're going to call it Demo. And this demo project comes with a number of things. It's already set up for continuous integration testing. It's already set up for internationalization. It's set up for a production build. Uh, so you can generate a, a program that you can deploy to a server and, and run as a web server, uh, probably behind an Nginx proxy or something. Um, so it has a lot of little things, but it has, you know, it's, it's light on the actual details of code. But it also has this really nice thing called dev cards. Uh, which is great for, for experimenting and starting to play around with small things so you don't have to get into the whole stack uh, to get moving. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is recommend that if you're, if you're not an advanced Clojure user already, you probably want to use IntelliJ with the cursive plugin. Um, and it'll start up and look like this. Uh, if you've not got the IntelliJ plugin yet, just go to, I'm sorry, the cursive plugin, just go here and search for cursive. Uh, and it should show up. If it doesn't show up there, you might have to go to uh, uh, browse repositories and, and type cursive there. And once you found it, there will be an install button there. You can install it, restart, and you're ready to go. So then you can import the project you just created with Line New. And uh, let's see now, where did I, I put that right here? All you have to do is click on the project file, hit open. It'll ask you a few questions. Make sure you've got a JVM installed because it'll ask you which JVM to use. I'm using 1.8 here and then it'll come up with the project. Now the first thing you want to do, since you've already got something here, let's explore the, the source just a little bit. Resources has a couple of HTML files in it, and the generated JavaScript will go there as well. Uh, IETNN has uh, GNU git text PO files that have already been generated with the project. The make file is a standard Unix make file. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a Unix old hat, uh, and I, I still can't avoid making make files sometimes, uh, but it has some tools for pulling the IETN strings out of your code and then generating code based on the translations of those strings and for running continuous integration testing. Now we have four source directories, one for tests, one for the main application itself, one for development kind of tools that are only needed during development. So we have our, our REPL namespaces here for dealing with things we'd like to do uh, while we're running in development mode. And here's where we have the dev card. So this is the first thing we're going to start up because this is the, um, the uh, easiest thing to start working with. So we're going to edit our runtime configurations. We're going to add a closure REPL local. And then make sure you choose closure main. If you use an REPL, uh, uh, the tool fig wheel, when you give you CLGS REPL, may not work as well. Um, And then there's a script actually in the script directory right here um, that can start up our hot code reload um, system. And in this JVM args directory, we can tell it which of the builds we'd like it to start. So minus capital D and then the build name. So we could start cards and tests and development and et cetera. Um, the more builds you start, the more overhead it is for compiling every time. Um, I usually uncheck the activate tool window down here because it just creates a noisy tool window that I never use. Um, and then of course you can apply that, you can call call this your cards build, uh, and then you could duplicate that and say for example change this uh, to dtest and then you would have two runtime configurations up here for starting those two different builds. So let's start with the cards. We're going to run that. Uh, you'll see fig wheel starting down here. FigWheel is, like I said, a hot code reload tool. If you're not familiar with the Clojure, Clojure script environment, um, it's meant for hot reloading your code. When you have immutable data structures and the state system that Fulcro has, this is a lot more useful than you've seen in JavaScript ecosystems because it can actually hot code uh, reload and leave your application state in place in a reliable fashion. You can actually watch your, your display update uh, while remaining in the state you left it. So we'll demonstrate that as we as we go. All right, and we're going to pop into the cards here. One of these files is just a list of requires of the different cards we want to load into our card interface. 
down here we'll see uh, at the top of this set of messages we can go to localhost 3449 to see these and we do need the cards.html file that's in our resources directory and that'll that'll just serve out of this folder right here public cards it's a simple HTML file that loads the cards JavaScript file um, we don't even need this div that's leftover cruft so I can reload, reload that and show you that it still works so we have to do is load the JavaScript our build configuration here um, for the cards I'll show it to you here real quickly just so you see there's not very much magic to it by including this this uh, dev cards true option in our build that causes figwheel to emit code into the JavaScript file that starts this user interface so it is a little magic but it's just a configuration parameter and then this is our actual intro card. We can see demo intro. There's the namespace demo intro. It has one card. We can go into that and we can see it looks like an SVG placeholder. I can come over here and I can pop into the SVG placeholder code and you can see what that looks like. So basically, this is the main macro in Fulcro 2.0, DefSD. It stands for de a defined stateful component, but the component doesn't actually have to have state. Um, and then the arguments to this, which looks sort of like a function, define a thing, it's really defining a class, um, but this creates um, a context for the body um, that the IDE can uh, kind of understand. So if your DefSC is turning yellow right now, just click once on it, click on this bubble, and say resolve that as a defin. And then you'll see IntelliJ re-index things that will no longer be yellow, and that will understand that this thing is defining this thing as if it were a function so then it understands the argument list destructuring and all of your highlighting and refactoring will work properly with this macro um, so for example if I want it to be a little more specific here I could say I'm going to rename the variable height and then you see it changes everywhere in the code now I don't want to do that because I'm actually destructuring keys and, and that would cause my the rest of my code to, to, to not work you can see that when I I define that this takes um, this which is, is always just a parameter it's the component itself when when the thing is rendered and the second parameter is the properties that are sent to it so if I go over to the card you can see that the properties I'm sending to it are a simple map with width and height W and H 200 by 200 if I change this to 100 um, then the card will refresh you'll see the placeholder right hot code reload over there and so this is just a quick little placeholder thing that's useful for throwing in place of images when you're developing. Um, and it actually does it with SVG, so it's really light um, and can, can work in the DOM. It doesn't have to be image information. And of course, if I wanted to customize how this looks, uh, now we'll notice a, there's a hot code reload thing here that happens in dev cards. You notice it really didn't change any look there. So if I go ahead and change the stroke to red and the stroke width to five, I haven't actually changed the data. And this is an attribute of DefSC. Uh, DefSC will not re-render the body of its uh, uh, of itself unless the properties have changed, unless you also change the React key, uh, which makes React think it needs to be re-rendered. So this is a feature that's useful for optimizing UI rendering, and normally is the right thing to do. In this particular case, because of the way we're running it, uh, it doesn't end up updating very well. Um, so if I change the properties, you'll see that it re-renders our borders now wider and it's red. Um, so this is one aspect of hot code reload. When we're not doing any data-driven um, programming, uh, the code reloads, but unless the data has changed, we don't actually see um, an update. All right, now, when we're working with Fulcro um, or ClojureScript in general, uh, I have a couple of things that I, I do. One, the project file that you'll have gotten from the line template has DevTools in it, which is a nice plugin for Chrome, um, and you can put it in the preloads of your builds. When you do that, that allows you to, to see ClojureScript data structures much more nicely in the console down here. But it only works if you go in and set some options. Um, so if you go to Settings, on console down here. There, there are two settings in particular that I recommend. I don't know if I can not make it go to the wrong thing. 
One is I like to disable cache when DevTools is open. That way I know I'm not getting stale files when I reload the browser. And the other one has to do with this, this plugin I was just showing you, the DevTools preload. Uh, that doesn't work unless you enable custom formatters. Um, and that's over here under console, enable custom formatters. So you want to do those two things with your browser. Okay, so now we're, we're kind of ready to, to start coding some things. So uh, I'm going to leave this open so my don't cache things stays in effect. And in the cards here. So dev cards, basically the way this works is you can define a card. Um, you give it a, a card name, just a symbol. You can put markdown stuff to kind of talk through what you're doing. This is great for design work. And then you can give it some sort of React element. So these DOM generators, um, which I don't have in scope, full crow client DOM as DOM. This make, gives you React uh, DOM generators. So I can make here a, a div. The next argument is the property. So for example, we pass these as a JavaScript object um, because these are low level for performance reasons for, for getting the, the elements out as quickly as possible instead of translating the data structures from closure script to JavaScript data structures to these low level React factories uh, this reader conditional is called uh, it causes basically the compiler as it's reading this file to emit the thing that follows it as a low level JavaScript thing uh, so for example here I could pass the the uh, the class name attribute or whatever um, uh, in, and then the children of this div. So now if I save this, you'll see the card update, and you'll see to do is in there. So I can quickly, you know, prototype out some UI, and and also talk about, you know, what I was doing as I was doing it. The 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 DOM namespace contains all the HTML5 um, things you might imagine bold, etc., div, paragraph, span. Um, uh, it is generating a level React, so it is a good idea for you to read and understand uh, uh, the React documentation and, and understand why, for example, like colon class is going to give you uh, a React warning or error down here in the, uh, in the console. Um, it's basically going to tell you, it's unknown property, did you mean class name? So in React, they actually rename some of the properties for various reasons. Class is a reserved word in the programming language uh, JavaScript, so I think that was their their main motivation. Uh, so now if I give that class name boo, um, we can see that if I go and inspect this, uh, I see class boo on the div element that's there. So that's a quick rundown of generating React structure. Now, of course, you can use functions um, to render things. So I might want to pass some properties uh, to a thing I want to render, and maybe I'll pick this up and plop it there. And, and I could say render thing um, my name. And of course, I've not actually destructured that here, so I can use destructuring to pull the keys of a map out into uh, variables, into bindings, um, and then I could say something like maybe wrap that in a something that creates a single string out of it. Alright, so now I'm kind of moving along and and building building up DOM. And you see in this one I'm not having my refresh problems. If I, if I change the definition of this to say um, uh, italics instead, you see it immediately updates in my view over there. The reason for this is I don't have defsc shortcutting the rendering because the data didn't change. So let's look at, at that. So if I, I now change this to a, a, a stateful component, with a stateful component the idea is the properties are driven from a database and I only care for it to re-render if the data changed. Uh, so that gives me an optimization. Um, of course I need to pull that in. So, full crow client primitives for devsc. And 
in this case now I have uh, this props and go down here and lock this for a second well actually that that will still work it's going to give me what looks like an error but these props this name So DefSC creates a class. And in order to create an element, a, an element in the UI, we need a factory. Let's add an alias here. So we want a factory for the thing renderer. That's a, kind of a crappy name for it. Um, and now you see that it's still doing the same thing, but now I have a component, and if I don't change the data, I'm going to change that to italics, you see it hot code reloads, but no, no change happens until I go and change the data. Okay, so that's our, uh, our introduction to just, just getting going with the, the very basics. In the next video, we'll, we'll delve a little more deeply into Full Crow's API.